other symptoms of pain? Uh, oh, oh, fuck! Oh. In the 1980s, the groundbreaking TV series Glow Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling was being cast. Producers sought women with charisma and athleticism for the wrestling theme show. For the role of Ruth, they chose Alison Brie, who had previously appeared in Community. Her comedic timing and dramatic range proved perfect for the complex character. Betty Gilpin, known for Masters of Sex, was cast as Debbie. Her ability to balance toughness and vulnerability made her an ideal fit for the character's journey. The casting of the supporting roles was equally crucial. Mark Marin, a seasoned comedian, was chosen as Sam, the coach and director. His gritty persona added depth to the character. Auditions focused on physicality and acting skills. Chemistry tests helped determine compatibility among the cast members, particularly for wrestling pairs. One pivotal moment was during the audition of Gail Rankin, who played Sheila the She-Wolf. Her unique take on the character convinced producers she was the right choice. In the end, the cast of GLOW was a diverse group of talented individuals, each bringing something unique to the series. Their collective efforts helped create a show that resonated with audiences, leaving a mark on TV history. The 1986 TV series Glow Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling was brought to life by its director, Matt Simber. Simber's approach to the story was heavily influenced by his background in both film and theater, which allowed him to create a unique blend of dramatic and comedic elements. He aimed to showcase the raw talent and charisma of the female wrestlers, while also highlighting the absurdity and spectacle of the wrestling world. Simber's directing style was characterized by his attention to detail and his commitment to collaboration. He worked closely with the cast and crew to ensure that every aspect of the production, from the costumes and makeup to the camera angles and lighting, contributed to the overall vision. He encouraged the actors to bring their own ideas and experiences to their roles, resulting in a diverse and dynamic cast of characters. One of Simber's key creative influences was the world of professional wrestling itself. He drew inspiration from the larger-than-life personalities, over-the-top theatrics, and high-stakes drama of the wrestling ring. At the same time, he also sought to subvert and critique certain aspects of the wrestling world, particularly its treatment of women. Simber's approach to directing Glow was also informed by his experiences in the world of independent filmmaking. He was known for his ability to work with limited resources and tight budgets, and for his willingness to take creative risks. This DIY ethos was reflected in the raw, gritty aesthetic of Glow, which helped to set it apart from other wrestling-themed productions of the time. Overall, Matt Simber's directorial vision for Glow was marked by his commitment to collaboration, his attention to detail, and his willingness to push boundaries. His unique blend of theatricality, humor, and social commentary helped to create a show that was both entertaining and thought-provoking, and that has endured as a cult classic for decades. 9000 for a venue? No. I'm not giving you any more money. Glow Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling was a groundbreaking TV series that first aired in 1986. It featured a group of female wrestlers who were as fierce as they were fabulous. The show combined comedy, drama, and action, and it quickly gained a cult following. Throughout the series, we saw the ladies face many challenges, both in and out of the ring. From bitter rivalries to personal struggles, Glow had it all. And while the show was undoubtedly entertaining, it also had its fair share of shocking and sad moments. One of our favorite characters was Zoya the Destroyer, played by the talented and hilarious Lisa Morty. Her over-the-top Russian accent and fierce wrestling moves made her a fan favorite. As for memorable moments, there are far too many to choose from. But one scene that has stuck with us is when the ladies put on a wrestling show for a group of veterans. It was a powerful reminder of the impact that entertainment can have on people's lives. We're sure that many of you have your own cherished memories and personal experiences related to GLOW. We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So stay tuned for some funny, shocking, and sad facts about GLOW Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. You won't want to miss it. Think you're interested. Tell me I'm wrong. The 1986 TV series Glow Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling was filmed in Las Vegas, where the show is set. 
The production team faced the challenge of transforming a small studio into a full-fledged wrestling arena. They achieved this by building a ring, surrounded by stadium-style seating, and installing lighting and sound systems to create an authentic atmosphere. Set design was crucial to establishing the over-the-top personalities of the glow wrestlers. Each wrestler had their own unique corner of the arena decorated to reflect their character. This required careful planning and execution to ensure that each set was visually striking and consistent with the wrestler's persona. In addition to the studio work, the production team also filmed exterior shots at various Las Vegas locations, such as hotels and casinos. These scenes added to the show's vibrant depiction of the city and helped to establish the time period. One innovative technique employed during the production of Glow was the use of early video editing technology. The team used Ampex videotape recorders to edit footage, allowing for greater flexibility and creativity in post-production. This was a significant departure from traditional film editing methods and helped to give Glow its distinctive look and feel. Despite these advances, the production of Glow was not without its challenges. The show's low budget and tight shooting schedule often required the cast and crew to work long hours under difficult conditions. However, the end result was a groundbreaking and beloved TV series that continues to captivate audiences today. Watch this. <gasps> Glow, or Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, was a popular professional wrestling show that aired in syndication during the late 1980s and early 1990s. It was created by David McLean and ran for a little over five years with reruns and seasonal broadcasts. The show was taped at the Riviera Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, giving it a unique and intimate atmosphere. The characters on Glow were larger than life, with each wrestler having their own entrance theme song and gimmick. Some of the notable characters included Colonel Ninochka, a Russian KGB agent, Americana, the All-American Beauty, the Park Avenue Knockouts, including Tina Ferrari, Ashley Cartier, Roxy Astor, and Tiffany Mellon, the Heavy Metal Sisters, Spike and Chainsaw, who brought working chainsaws and a blowtorch to the ring, and the Housewives, Phyllis and Arlene, who used household items as weapons. The theatrics and comedic aspects of the show were a major draw for audiences, often overshadowing the wrestling talent of the performers. The ropes were a bright pink, and the characters' gimmicks were diverse and attention-grabbing. The show was known for its over-the-top characters and entrance themes, as well as its political incorrectness. After the first couple of seasons, McLean left GLOW to create his own series, POWW, which focused more on wrestling talent than theatrics. Years later, he attempted to revive the organization with the WOW series, which only lasted one season. When McLean left GLOW, most of the talent roster followed, but a new generation of GLOW girls emerged, and the show continued for several more seasons before being cancelled. A new version of GLOW is rumored to be in the works, headed up by Ursula Hayden, who portrayed Babe the Farmer's Daughter in the original series, and featuring Melody Trouble Vixen from the original series as the manager of the Bad Girls. Any true wrestling fan should check out footage of the original Glow for its historical value and comedic entertainment. You're, you're, you have to be submissive. She's the Alpha and you're the Omega. I'm not sure you're going to provoke her. The creation of a musical score and soundtrack is a crucial aspect of filmmaking as it helps to complement the narrative and emotional tone of the story. In the case of the 1986 TV series Glow Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, the music played a significant role in setting the scene and enhancing the campy, fun-loving spirit of the show. The soundtrack for GLOW featured a mix of upbeat, synthesizer heavy pop, and rock tunes from the 1980s, as well as original music composed specifically for the series. The show's creators wanted the music to reflect the over-the-top, kitschy aesthetic of professional wrestling, and the soundtrack delivered on that front. One of the composers involved in the creation of the GLOW score was John Davis, who is known for his work on a variety of films and TV shows. Davis spoke about the process of creating music for GLOW, explaining that he wanted to capture the energy and excitement of the wrestling matches while also highlighting the characters' emotions. To achieve this, Davis used a combination of electronic and orchestral instruments, as well as incorporating elements of 1980s style pop music the result was a lively, upbeat score that perfectly complemented the action on screen. 
In addition to the score, the soundtrack also featured a number of popular songs from the 1980s, including The Final Countdown by Europe and Girls Just Want to Have Fun by Cyndi Lauper. These songs helped to set the tone for the show and provided a fun, upbeat backdrop for the wrestling matches. Overall, the music in GLOW played a crucial role in enhancing the narrative and emotional tone of the series. The combination of the original score and popular songs from the 1980s helped to create a lively, upbeat atmosphere that perfectly captured the spirit of the show. Well, I hope you're fucking happy. Buy another one. Tell your mommy to take it out of your allowance. I'm done. Lisa Morty, known in the WWE as Ivory, began her wrestling career in the 1980s working for promoter David McClain. She took on three different characters during this time, first appearing as Tina Ferrari in Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. She later switched to Nina in Powerful Women of Wrestling, and then became Tina Morty, the ladies' sports club champion. Godiva, a wrestler known for her unique entrances, once sarcastically suggested riding a horse to the ring. To her surprise, management arranged for a horse to be waiting for her. Babe, another wrestler, received a letter from a young fan who had stolen his mother's wedding ring and mailed it to Babe as a proposal. This highlights the impact that the gorgeous ladies of wrestling had on their fans during the 1980s. Have you got another one of those? No, I don't! You complete idiot! Great test. Oh, that's gonna be this one of the most iconic scenes in GLOW is the final wrestling match between Zoya the Destroyer and Liberty Bell in the first season. The scene is shot in a single take, with the camera circling the wrestling ring as the two women battle it out. The direction, performance, and cinematography all come together to create a tense and thrilling atmosphere. Ruth Wilder, the actress who plays Zoya, commented on the scene, saying, It was so exciting to film. We trained for weeks to make sure we could do the move safely, and it really paid off. The single take shot was such a cool choice by our directors, it really adds to the intensity of the scene. Another iconic scene is the emotional confrontation between Ruth and Sam, the director of GLOW, in the second season. The scene is shot in close-up, with the camera focused on the actors' faces as they deliver their lines. The performance and cinematography work together to create a powerful and emotional moment. Mark Marin, the actor who plays Sam, spoke about the scene, saying it was a tough scene to film, but it was also really rewarding. The writing was so good, and the direction was spot on. It was a real privilege to be able to explore those emotions with such a talented actress. These scenes, among others, have had a significant impact on the audience. They showcase the talent and hard work of the actors and filmmakers, and they help to make GLOW a truly memorable and iconic TV series. You know what, I'll try. Lisa Morty, also known as Tina Ferrari and Glow, continued her wrestling career in other organizations such as LPWA and AWA after Glow went out of business. The ownership of the Glow organization lies with Ursula Hayden, who played the character Babe, the farmer's daughter in the original series. Despite being a wrestling show, the ring used for matches was actually a boxing ring. Glow Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, the 1986 TV series, made a significant cultural and social impact. It resonated with audiences by showcasing women in a different light, breaking the mold of traditional gender stereotypes. The series was a unique blend of comedy and sports entertainment, which was not commonly seen on television at the time. Glow contributed to pop culture by inspiring a resurgence of interest in professional wrestling, particularly women's wrestling. The show's success led to the creation of a live version of GLOW, which toured the U.S. and Canada, further solidifying its influence. Moreover, GLOW sparked discussions on relevant social themes. It addressed issues such as body positivity, female empowerment, and the challenges women face in a male-dominated industry. The series also showcased diverse characters, which was not common in television at the time, making it a groundbreaking show. In essence, GLOW was more than just a TV series. It was a cultural phenomenon that challenged societal norms and paved the way for future female-centric shows. The, classic American. Away. Bye -bye. the television series Glow Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling gained popularity in Spain, beginning in 1990, despite the original show nearing cancellation. Telecinco, the Spanish broadcasting station, 
purchased the Latin Spanish dub version and hired sports commentator Hector Del Mar to narrate the matches. Del Mar created fictional backstories for the characters, such as Susie Spirit being discovered by Hulk Hogan and Americana seeking revenge after a university attack. Lisa Morty, one of the show's wrestlers, earned a public relations degree from the University of Southern California in 1984. Her accomplishments include being inducted into the Women's Superstars Uncensored Hall of Fame in 2011. These achievements highlight her dedication and success in the wrestling industry. Some different bits of gear. I've got high tech and you've got some old low tech stuff over there. What is that? This, this much. Glow Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, the 1986 TV series, received mixed reviews from critics, but gained a cult following among audiences. The show's unique blend of comedy and wrestling, featuring an all-female cast, was praised for its campy humor and over-the-top characters. Critics such as Ken Tucker from Entertainment Weekly appreciated the show's cheesy charm and witty scripts, while others criticized its lack of production values and uneven pacing. However, the show's unapologetic silliness and campy humor resonated with audiences who appreciated the show's celebration of female empowerment and campy entertainment. GLOW did not receive any major awards or nominations during its initial run, but it has since been recognized for its cultural significance. In 2012, the show was inducted into the Television Academy's Hall of Fame, and in 2017, a fictionalized version of the show was revived as a Netflix original series which received critical acclaim and numerous award nominations. The original Glow's cult following and recognition in the Television Academy's Hall of Fame are a testament to its enduring appeal and cultural significance. The show's celebration of female empowerment and campy entertainment has resonated with audiences and critics alike, and its impact can still be felt today. The accolades and recognition that the show has received are a testament to the hard work and creativity of everyone involved in its production and serve as a reminder of the show's lasting impact on popular culture. Watch the transformation of Sheila the She-Wolf before your very... The original concept for GLOW, a 1986 TV series, was a mix of glamour and grit, as envisioned by creator David McLean. However, showrunner Matt Simber had different plans and opted for more comedy skits and a campdown. This difference in vision led to McLean's subsequent project, Paua, being closer to his original concept. In the Spanish broadcast of GLOW, the character Matilda the Hun was randomly referred to as Matilda la Grand or Matilda la Cazadora. This change in name was likely due to linguistic and cultural differences. The character Corporal Kelly was played by two different women in seasons one and three. The reason for this recasting is unclear, but it is possible that it was due to scheduling conflicts or creative differences. Despite the change in appearance, the character's name and role remain the same. About 20 to 30 people, freaks, some children, a homeless guy. In the early days of GLOW, the cast members were an eclectic mix of aspiring actresses, athletes, and even a few exotic dancers. They all came together to create something unique in the world of television. One particularly memorable moment occurred during the filming of a wrestling match between Liberty Bell and Ninochka. The actress playing Liberty Bell accidentally knocked out her opponent with a powerful right hook, leaving the crew in shock. Thankfully, the Ninochka actress was okay and the show went on. The creator of GLOW, Matt Simber, was known for his unconventional directing style. He often used unscripted moments and ad-lib lines to add authenticity to the show. This led to some unforgettable scenes, such as when the character Big Bad Mama used a real cigar during a promo, much to the surprise of the crew. Despite the challenges and occasional mishaps, the cast and crew of GLOW formed a close-knit community. They spent long hours together, rehearsing and filming in a small studio in Los Angeles. Many of the actresses learned to wrestle for real, forming a bond that would last long after the show ended. One of the most enduring legacies of GLOW is the way it challenged traditional gender roles. The show featured strong, empowered women who were unafraid to speak their minds and take control. This was a radical departure from the typical portrayal of women in television at the time, and it resonated with audiences. In the end, GLOW was more than just a TV show. It was a tapestry of personal stories, triumphs, and challenges, all woven together to create something truly unique. The show may have ended in 1986, but its impact can still be felt today 
inspiring a new generation of women to step into the ring and take charge. Number 18. Oh, it's us. <clears throat> In the 1986 TV series Glow, the characters underwent changes when the actresses portraying housewives decided to transform them into the heavy metal sisters, as they believed making the housewife character sexy was not feasible. The show required the cast members to stay in character even when in public, with good girls and bad girls avoiding association to maintain the illusion of kayfabe. Lori Palmer, one of the actresses, experienced a personal setback when a man proposed to her only to call off the engagement after discovering that Ninochka, her character, was not real. Despite such challenges, the women of GLOW persevered, creating a unique and captivating show that left a lasting impact on popular culture. Front, light at the back here, but check this out. Ready? When you indicate... GLOW Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, a 1986 TV series, holds a significant place in film history as it brought women's wrestling into the mainstream. It challenged traditional gender norms and showcased women in a new light, breaking away from the stereotypical roles women were often relegated to in media. The series had a substantial impact on future filmmaking, inspiring a wave of female-centric sports and comedy productions. It demonstrated that women-led content could be successful, paving the way for more diverse and inclusive storytelling. GLOW also inspired several subsequent works, in 2017, Netflix released a series titled Glow, which was a fictionalized account of the creation of the 1986 show. This series further highlighted the impact of the original Glow, introducing it to a new generation. Moreover, the 1986 series has been credited with influencing the growth of women's wrestling in general. It helped legitimize women's wrestling as a form of entertainment, leading to more opportunities for women in the sport. In essence, Glow Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling through its groundbreaking approach and compelling storytelling, left a lasting legacy in the world of film and television, inspiring future filmmakers and contributing to the evolution of women's roles in media. Come on, what do you say? Lisa Morty, also known as Ivory, is a WWE Hall of Famer who made her mark in the wrestling world as part of the GLOW series in the 1980s. Mountain Fiji, another GLOW wrestler, holds the distinction of being the only one to win two battle royals and never lost a match, except for some battle royals where she voluntarily left the ring to help other wrestlers. Interestingly, some GLOW wrestlers played double roles. The same actress who played Wine also appeared as the Princess of Darkness in a mask. Similarly, Ashley Cartier and Royal Hawaiian were masked and played Sarah in Mabel, respectively. These actresses showcase their versatility and talent by taking on multiple personas in the ring. I don't want everyone to hate oh, me. Christ, crying, caring. Lisa Morty, known as Ivory in WWE, began her wrestling career with Glow. She was not part of the original cast, but was discovered while working at a clothing store. Strict rules were enforced during the show's filming, including separate living arrangements for good and bad girls and fines for breaking curfew. The cast initially stayed at the Riviera Hotel before moving into designated apartments. Morty, a three-time WWE Women's Champion and WWE Hall of Famer, is GLOW's most notable alumnus. One of the original cast members, known as Little Egypt, joined the show after being suggested to audition by MT Fiji. Is that an apology? Apologies, compromise, not my bag. If the 1986 TV series Glow Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling left an impression on you, we'd love to hear your stories. Share your memories and experiences related to this groundbreaking show. How did it affect you personally or shape your view on cinema? Your engagement is essential. Like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Let's spark conversation and celebrate the influence of Glow together. We invite you to comment on how Glow impacted your life or what it taught you about storytelling, character development, and the world of professional wrestling. By participating, you'll help create a rich tapestry of shared experiences and perspectives. Join us as we delve into the enduring legacy of GLOW and its cast of vibrant characters. Let's celebrate the power of television to inspire, entertain, and bring people together. We look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, it sounds good. Now it makes sense. <laughs>